Been quite a few months with the video on Yandere Simulator and looking at the mismanagement of the game over the past 6 years of development. This will be the last part talking about Yandev with the development angle. The games that will be covered are Yandere Simulator and Bright Memory, which was mentioned at the very end of the last video on this topic, which was also made by one person as well. The focus will be comparing both of the devs from the similarities and differences between budget, development team, and even how much money you live off of the game, and so on. Because having a hot, sexy pair of jiggling tits in the corner of the screen, duh, stupid question, stupid person. Bright Memory is a game just like Yandev, made by one person, although this person hasn't had any volunteers work on the first game. It was planned as something being episodic, but with how many people purchased the game, it now became a full new brand game, and people who bought the early access version will be getting Bright Memory Infinite for free. As for those that still purchased it as a full release, should still get it, but no promises though. Early access was $7 US, $10 full release, and oddly, now on Xbox Series X for $8. Quick update. Apparently the series X port has had problems and also Bright Dev has addressed some bugs to the porting crew so who knows if it'll get updated. But if you want to try the small prequel, be cautious with the price and how long it takes which will be mentioned in a bit. Also found out there's a version on phones to support him and to play too but no promises on Bright Memory Infinite going to mobile devices. The game lasts for around half an hour or an hour to some online when going in blind and trying to learn stuff. Bright Memory was made by one person in his spare time, and Bright Dev got a team to port it on console. Oh yeah, quick little note, we're gonna call him Bright Dev because I don't want to butcher his real name, and also it's a little bit longer saying his full channel online name too. Anyways, he's also supposed to have some people work on Infinite, but 2020 he has been working on it once again by himself. But hopefully, he will be getting the team helping and working with him soon. The price can be expected to be fully released at $60 on consoles, but there's a chance it can be the indie price of around $20 or $40. Onto the full release of the Yandere Simulator demo. Yandev has been working on the game for over 6 years, which we all know now, where at first it was himself, and later had the chance to have volunteers with varieties of experience to help with his game. There really is no price to pay for the demo in previous builds, but one can argue some backers pricing could count for this category, where even if you donate $1 a month, in over one year you would have paid more money than buying Bright Memory for example. You can download it for free on the site, and the game is planned to be released on PC. The demo's length is the same as Bright Memory, where it can take you roughly half an hour, or a bit over an hour. Once a second rival is added into the game, it will cost around 5 US dollars coming from his own website. As for it going on early access for Steam or any other website, who knows as of right now. For the full price, it can be expected to cost like many other indie games out there. One other thing to look at with prices and donations for the game is seeing how they live off of their games. Put all the money in the bag. I'm robbing you. This is, this is a robbery. Stick them up. It's no surprise that when making your own game, that you would like to live off making it. Since that's the dream to be a game dev, and for sure making your very own video game that can help pay the bills. And maybe even spawn a successful career which has been seen with the creators for Undertale and the FNAF franchise. Even Minecraft. Though usually these people have made the money afterwards. Early access games can help creators that are worrying about making the jump living on their own with the game. With Bright Dev, it was cautiously planned out with him working on Bright Memory in his spare time, which was the safest way when making one's own game, easily knowing you can still have your own place. It was shortly then released episodic in early access, but luckily for him, the game made so much money that he could be on his own, and he was able to use all that money to go and make his own brand new game. Even with the publisher and partnering with Microsoft, he admits you can't be too lazy. On the other end with development by Yandere Dev, he quit his job to pursue making his own games, the one we all know being Yandere Sim. There most likely was some money saved up for him to be on his own for a while, 
and started to work on Yandere Simulator, where Patreon was made along with beginning to upload on YouTube, making ad revenue as well. Besides making money from donations and ad revenue, he also makes money from sponsors in game too. Where one dev made money from sales of his first game, and technically a demo, and maybe even a partnership, the other dev was making money for years off Patreon. Making money is one aspect. But what's important is what you do with that new budget. Those are some big busty boobies. With the money being made from the game, especially early access, that money is supposed to be used for the game as much as possible. But there's no problem that some of that money is expected to help you when living by yourself. Though with many early access games and crowdfunded ones that can be given flexible funding, they're mostly shut down with development if the goal isn't met and the project is abandoned entirely or just released at a broken state. This can be applied to any game out there. Also, fun fact, do you know that what crowdfunded games money was allegedly spent on booze and strippers? Ant Simulator out of all the games out there. As for Bright Dev and Yandere Dev, the prices have been spot on being spent on the game, from the game's music, voice actors, and even some of the game's models. Which for some reason, people thought was stolen somehow with it being a purchase for everyone to use though. And also, having Yandere Dev saying that some are placeholders looks kinda like a waste of money. Or maybe people make a version with the base off that, which might make a bit more sense when he decides to upgrade the models of the characters. Besides spending money on the game, some personal purchases are supposed to be behind closed doors by the way. Personal purchases should usually be a private guilty pleasure since it could be something really expensive and hopefully just done extremely rarely with the focus of funds being on the game. If anything, one expected purchase that maybe not many people will criticize you for is upgrading your PC. It also depends on the game engine you're using to make your game. Some people have said if it's something very simple, then a low-end computer is pretty decent for what it'll do. And if it's something like Unreal Engine 4, for example, you might want something that everyone kind of has in their systems right now. You don't need to start off making games using a NVIDIA 3080. Purchases made by BrightDev haven't been seen to the public so far. Unless someone who chooses to do research could possibly find some stuff out there, it wouldn't be a surprise. Not to mention, unlike Yandere Dev, Bright Dev isn't the most recorded developer in internet history. So far. For Yandere Dev, which has been said by many creators, you probably know recently unless you don't, but Yandere Dev has had some of his purchases being a love doll, two switches, and many games that come out year after year. Besides being embarrassed about what they buy, one worse feeling for sure is getting caught with a scandal. With the games shipped out to the public to see, sooner or later someone was going to do research and find something stolen and even used for personal gain. For Bright Dev, it was shown that the creatures found in the beginning, and apparently the knight on the last level was stolen. As for how this dev dealt with this, was by him apologizing when confronted and contacted the people who owned it. He even did some custom model replacement and along with some new funding to help too. As for Yandere Dev, there has been a lot of scandals. The most infamous example was stolen grass. Then there were volunteers not being credited, artwork not being credited, and even being called out for art theft, which he made a long essay on. It should also be shown that when using MMD projects in a game, some descriptions have said to not be used for personal gain. It's also been shown that usually Yandere Dev would deny it unless shown to the public and grab attention, which would then be blown off as a placeholder. Both of these developers made money off stolen assets at first, which is obviously terrible. Whereas Bright Dev admitted it when called out and replaced it as soon as possible, and even claimed to have contacted some of the people with the copyright, Yandere Dev would deny quite a lot of stuff, especially when making money off it for months and years on end. Using a placeholder excuse when still making money off the project doesn't get you off the hook. Whether more assets will be found or not, Yandere Dev has got to replace any that he knows that others don't. Unless he says he has replaced all of them before launching the crowdfunding campaign. Besides trying to have an excuse with placeholders, one thing that's important on both sides against or with Yandere Dev is the development time with stolen ideas 
and crunch. This is the dumbest shit. This is so stupid. What a waste of time. In the gaming industry, it's been notoriously known for having crunch time, mostly getting paid average wage, working, sleeping, and living at work. Having overtime with none of that pay, breakdowns, and people quitting are just some common examples. This brings up the question, how does this fall in with developers being talked about? Along with a other question, which is having your vision being grabbed by many others to make with passion or mostly as a little cash grab. Bright Dev's crunch seems to be non-existent. He says in an interview that he will mostly work all day on Bright Memory Infinite and have a to-do list set up the very next day. Although it's so late, it's already tomorrow when he makes it. Probably already used to functioning like this since he does have game development experience, mostly with environments. When it comes to the aspect of someone also making a full-blown Bright Memory-esque type game with similar mechanics and gameplay, well, Bright Dev would have the game probably out before a PC version were to come out as either an influence or a quick broken cash grab. Yandere Dev's crunch time has gotten to him since he was for quite a long time focused on extra stuff, making videos, and working on the game at the same time. A schedule can be expected for him to do the next day too, just like Bright Dev did. Though Yandev will take more breaks often, and some of the breaks would be streaming on Twitch, which was a problem back then, and now he's gone to stream 3 hours quite often every day. Although a criticism with streaming every day is that he does it so often rather than now and then. Some more valid criticisms with time management and crunch is that volunteers have been used as an excuse to slow development. Another one being he's the writer, sound producer, director, and so on for the game. Although Bright Dev is the same thing too. One last thing to add is having a Yandere Sim-like game coming out sooner or later. Some of those games would grab public attention and then just end due to personal life or having following scandals just like Yandere Sim has. Even mobile ripoffs would come sooner or later, but since the concept has been shown to the public for over six years, it wouldn't be a surprise. Dear honey, come down. Come down and, and give your lover a kiss. Mm. Just one new last thing before it's wrapped up on Yandere Dev and it won't be on the development angle. It'll be pretty short, trust me. Although, you'll probably expect other content creators to cover it and diving into it whether it'll be short or a long video, who knows. Back to what has to be mentioned now. In case you don't know, it's recently been found out that Yandev owned a video game babe's Twitter account and wrote articles for it too. You can even read some using the Wayback Machine. In examples, in one article he talks about latex bodysuits and at the end you probably know what he's going to say given the characters he likes. Yandere Dev says this at the end of an article. Only one can hope that the group develops a Zero Suit Samus catsuit in the near future. Chat, do you see that? You see that? You see, you see that shit? You see that? With everything said and done, Bright Memory should come out either late 2020 or early 2021. Yandere Simulator is getting near its crowdfunding campaign with only need to add one more rival into the game. How soon exactly? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. One thing is for sure, using the one-man team excuse can't really be applied all the time if someone else is making their very own unique game too. Though one valid excuse could be with game dev experience where Yandev did this as a hobby and could learn a bit slower. Hopefully you know a bit more on the development angle that was covered. From the team of people working on it, price, living off their games with a budget too, stolen assets, stolen ideas possibly, and crunch time. It's going to be quite the thing to watch from both games being released and seeing what problems the game has at launch and even if Yandere Dev still continues on making the game with the crowdfunding campaign not reaching the goal. Key thing being if that were to happen. We'll all see when it gets there. Some stuff that will be linked will mostly be an article in an interview about Bright Dev and also the tools that he uses for his game development which if you're interested in you can go and have a look at it if you have any future projects or to implement on current ones you have. Maybe one day if Yandere Dev were to make another game he'll learn a huge lesson after after Yandere Sim, that's for sure. And also, hopefully he'll implement tools with the game engine that he will use in the future with any games that he decides to make after Yandere Simulator. One thing to end off on, 
It is not uncommon for smaller developers to use pre-made assets in games. What's impressive is being able to incorporate them into a polished gameplay environment.